I am really glad that none of the churches in our area are competitive. Seriously, I am. Because if by chance we were competitive, then each of our congregations would probably need an outside church sign like the one Good Shepherd Lutheran Church on Quantum Street in Quincy has, where you can change up the messages with fresh quotations now and then for the gazillion people who drive by every day. Now, just in the past week, I've had their latest drive-by message pointed out to me at least two times, and I've driven past it multiple times myself. If you haven't yet seen this one, it says, Sermons like biscuits, better with shortening. <laughs> Go ahead, laugh. Laugh out loud. I agree. Sermons like biscuits, better with shortening. The fruit of the Spirit, thanks be to God, also includes laughter. Perhaps hearing the same scripture for a few weeks in a row, as we have this summer, first in July with Jesus' parable of the sower in Matthew, and now with Isaiah 55, perhaps that is a bit like driving by it multiple times, giving us many chances to have it sink in, or for us to sink in to another piece of it. This week, when I began to sink into Isaiah 55 again and open myself to have it sink deeper into me, I kept lingering over and getting hooked by the second part of the third verse. Listen so that you may live. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. The invitation to abundant life that comes to us now and first came to the people of Israel in these words of the prophet Isaiah absolutely come from a still speaking God. We in the United Church of Christ are very good at claiming and proclaiming a still speaking God. Believing in a God of continuous revelation is one of the things I love about being in the United Church of Christ. And sometimes I wonder how well we listen for and to that still speaking God. Incline your ear to me and come to me. Listen so that you may live. Now when any preacher worth her salt asks you to listen to her for even a shortened sermon, she is also asking you to incline your ear and come to God. Listen to God so that you may live. About a year ago, our two congregations partnered together to form collaborative small groups of people to engage in community conversations with local educators, faith leaders, youth, environmental activists, and many others so we could listen to the pulse, the heartbeat of our community. Within those conversations, we heard our neighbors express needs for greater mental health services, even more youth gathering places and activities, affordable housing, urgent action toward more sustainability and care for the earth. To listen to the needs of our neighbors is one way for us to incline our ears to God and listen so that we may live. Last Sunday, Joe led a number of us in a Lectio Divina session on Isaiah 55 that facilitated and encouraged a deep, deep listening to this text, our hearts and one another. Lectio Divina is one of the great treasures of the Christian tradition of prayer. It means divine reading, which is reading the holy text we believe to be divinely inspired. This tradition of prayer flows out of a Hebrew method of studying the scriptures, which is called Haggadah or Agadah, which is an interactive interpretation of the scriptures by means of the free use of the text to explore its inner meaning. We believe it was actually part of the devotional practice of religious Jews in the days of Jesus. Lectio Divina is a reading, reflecting, responding, and resting in the Word of God, and is also a way of inclining our ear to God and listening so that we may live. 
So this morning, I find myself wondering, in what other ways might we be called to incline our ear to God and listen now so that we may live? It appears very clear to me that we must listen to the earth in its deep, deep distress as it cries out to us in rapidly melting glaciers, in massive wildfires, in places we've not seen them before. Torrential rains, scorching heat. Folk music Deirdre McCalla released an album in 1985 entitled Don't Doubt It, including her song, Oh the Earth. I commend the entire song to you. You can find a recording of it on YouTube easily. But one of the most haunting parts in that song is these words of the chorus. Oh, the earth, the earth, she angry. Hear her tremble. The blood is boiling deep inside her eyes. The earth, the earth, she angry. She's going to stop us and save herself before she dies. Incline your ear and come to God in the midst of the wonders and distress of God's good creation and listen so that you may live. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, proclaimed Isaiah, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, says our God. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Is there any question that we also desperately need to listen again or for the first time to one another across and beyond so many fiercely held artificial death-dealing boundaries among generations between political parties and systems, among religious traditions of all kinds, including all who increasingly claim none, across socioeconomic class, races and ethnicities, sexual orientations and gender expressions. We desperately need to learn and be willing to listen again to one another inclining our ears to one another, our hearts to one another, to hear God, to listen deeply, humbly, intentionally, to learn, to care, to honor, to reconcile and be reconciled, to behold one another. Until we hear God, to be and become more whole together. Listen, 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 so that we may live. For then, and perhaps only then, might we go out in joy and be led back in peace. For then, and perhaps only then, might the mountains and the hills before us burst into song, and all the trees of the fields clap their hand. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to God for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Please, God, we pray, lead us to incline our ears to you, in our neighbors, in your holy word, in our earthly home that you have entrusted to us and our care, and to one another. May we listen, still speaking God. May we listen so that we may live. Amen. And amen.